and just ready to talk about dangerous parts of volcanoes. All right, so we got our learning targets here, and let's go ahead and get started. <clears throat> so there's a lot of hazards associated with volcanoes, aren't there? Oh, yeah. And the first thing that we want to talk about is the pyroclastic flows. So this is probably the most dangerous part of the volcano. There's a lot of dangerous parts, but most people, I think, are under this misconception that, like, the lava is going to come in and chase yeah. people down and et cetera. But it's really the, the gases, the ash, and everything else associated with those, associated with those violent eruptions. Okay. And then another part of it that has to do with the pyroclastic flow is the Nuwe Ardan, which is uh, a cloud of basically the hot gases. Um, and it basically stays low to the ground, mm -hmm. and it moves its <coughs> way down the volcano and uh, has some hot ash in there, a little bit of lava, some pumice sure. in there. And uh, it can be a really deadly part of it. Yeah. And then finally, we have the lahars, which is uh, that volcanic debris kind of mixed in with water. And um, a lot of times at these, at these high peaks of volcanoes, you'll have like snow and things like that and and that'll start to melt and you'll get the water flows combined with ash and it'll move down those steep slopes and it can pick up a lot of debris it'll have ash and things like that in it and it can be really really dangerous and you can see in this picture down here like it almost looks like just a dirty river that's coming yeah. down and it's a huge river because it's mixed in with all that ash and it like has a really thick consistency exactly. almost like cement all right, so we have some of the pyroclastic materials here, and we have a, a, a close-up of the ash up there on, uh, on your right, and we can see the ash inside of uh, what seems to be a house or something like that. And, and the ash is really, really dangerous and can travel really, really far distances away from uh, the eruption itself. And it's not like ash that you would find at a campfire with like burning wood. It's actually just small, really small pieces of rock. Yeah, and it's actually um, like smaller than sand, and yeah. it's really fine, but it's also like fairly sharp. Like if you sure. breathe it in, you can actually get some decent damage in your lungs and in your breathing path passage. And that's just more of an extension on what you just said in terms of, of what can happen, skin inflammation, eye irritation, um, and, and it's sometimes that ash can be so thick that it can actually block out the sun. Yeah, um, there's been instances where uh, the earth has <clears throat> missed out on seasons because of uh, worldwide like volcanic eruptions, sure. and uh, it has great effects on the climate nearby the volcano. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also got an interesting picture up here. You want to tell us about what's up at the yeah, top? Yeah, that is, uh, those are the ash people of Mount Vesuvius, um, or actually of Pompeii and Herculaneum are these two towns in Italy situated at the, at the base of Mount Vesuvius, and uh, there was a catastrophic eruption in 79 AD that, that, that caught these people by surprise, and they were frozen in time. Yeah, and you can still go and see, and they've been preserved like that, just covered with the ash. <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, and some other common problems you could get, I mean, just logistically wise, if you get ash on the roads, they become slippery. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times they'll <clears throat> close down highways because it's just not safe to travel on it. Yeah, and, and a lot of times <clears throat> cars or planes like can't travel. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about your car, it needs, it needs air inside there to actually work the combustion engine. And if you have those fine particulates of ash, which are rock, that can't happen. Yeah, it's just like in a plane. I mean, the engines, if they get filled with rocks, they're not going to be able to spin the motors. So, you know, you're not going to be able to fly. Uh, you had a student that had something to do with this picture. Yeah, here, right? exactly. If we take a look uh, down in that picture in the bottom left, there was uh, um, a volcanic eruption in Iceland that sent ash up into the atmosphere, and the, and, and the winds had kind of carried it over into Europe and actually shut down um, uh, quite a few airports in Europe. And uh, I had a student that was actually stuck in London for a couple of weeks because all the... Uh, the uh, airlines were shut down at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the other things that we look at, uh, this is closer <clears> to the <throat> volcano now, is uh, some more of this pyroclastic material, the lava bombs. Um, when the volcano erupts, a lot of lava gets sent into the air, and uh, as it comes down, it cools and solidifies and can actually just be a projectile that's coming down yeah. towards the Earth. Exactly, moving at extreme speeds, supersonic mm -hmm. speeds. And if you look at it, these lava bombs, uh, they kind of have like a teardrop shape or sure. a rocket shape because when they cool, they're flying as a liquid, and as yeah. they fall, they kind of go into an aerodynamic shape. Exactly. Cool. Um, I think that's all we got it for is. today. So if you guys go to your class website, take the quick quiz, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. All right. Take care.